So I, I think the first thing to say is um, I keep drawing the analogy to the late 60s and you talked, obviously, you, you were talking about the 70s as well. So I, in the late 60s, as I said, we had a peg exchange rate, right? Um, and so the process was elongated. I think these things, firstly, I think things are happening much more rapidly. Mm. And it's partly because we don't have the fixed exchange rate, right? But we came out of Bretton Woods when the system collapsed, the pegged system collapsed in currencies, and the dollar fell 50% against the Deutsche Mark and 50% against the yen. Why shouldn't the same thing happen again? is my fundamental, you know, why it's it's insanity, right? Is repeating the same thing, expecting a different outcome. We're doing, we're heading in that same direction. We've got a central bank, which ultimately I feel we're not there yet. We have to go through the pain There's some steps that have to click into place. But I think given the alternative, there is no alternative ultimately, but it's gonna to have to underpin the US debt markets. And as it does that, the dollar is gonna start falling. And I have models already, which is suggesting a, an accelerative, rapid dollar decline, right? So what 30, are the knock-on effects of that for other asset classes? Well, as I said, I mean, I think it's it's hugely inflationary, right? It's hugely inflationary. You take the dollar and you overlay it over like G7 inflation. It's perfectly like an inverse relationship. It's hugely inflationary. It is uh, it's great for obviously your precious metals, but probably more silver than gold. Because ultimately, a falling dollar is globally reflationary. It's stimulating. Emerging markets. Yeah. It's, you know, Raul says, and I, he's, it's a great expression. He goes, you know, look, if I know where the dollar's going, I just need to buy commodities and EM and go and sit on a beach for 10 years. Right? And basically, he's right. right? Can I push back here a little, Julian? Because yeah. I can't imagine the ECB, the BOJ, just watching the dollar tank which makes the U.S. and their exports that much more competitive on the global landscape. I can't imagine the ECB and the BOJ and some of these other major central banks allowing their currencies to value so far against the dollar because of what it does for their, their economy. We, we have been since 08, 09 in this sort of zero sum game of currency wars and competitive devaluations and all that fun stuff, which I'm sure you're, you're, you you know. Right. Well, so, so. so here's the, here's the thing. Uh, Yes, but dynamics change a little bit. So the first thing is, how are they going to stop it happening? Okay, so if they want to stop it happening, they have to run, parry, pursue their QE with the Fed's QE. Okay, how are they going to do that? Because if you look at the dollar against the relative balance sheets, it's a pretty decent indicator. How are they going to do that? They can buy the dollar. Uh, you're going to start, you're going to start really, you, you, the ECB is going to come in and start selling euros and buying dollars. Well, it, the, unilaterally, that's going to be politically pretty friggin' explosive in the US, right? Where the US will be saying, at least initially in the decline, this is just a correction because our currency was way overvalued for a long time. So don't, you're a manipulator, right? I mean, that's, there's all sorts of horrible things there. So, I don't think they can buy the dollar. I don't think they've got the assets that they can generate domestically, which will allow them to keep up with the Fed. The, the European governments are not going to spend 15 to 20, not going to run 15 to 20 percent of GDP deficits like the US Treasury is.